incredibly important. So. All right, let's see here. Scrolling my way up. All right. Do you guys see the screen here? District 5000 Global Grants Webinar. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm James Hamm. I'm uh, with the Honolulu Sunset. Um, I'm wearing a different hat for this meeting. <laughs> I'm serving as the District International Service Chair. Um, joining us today also is uh, Murray Visser, the past District International Service Chair, uh, who kind of handed the torch off to me. Uh, he's with the, the Rotary Club of Windward Oahu, Nanakai. And uh, last but not least, definitely not least, uh, is the person that introduced me into Global Grants, uh, Mark Harbinson. Uh, he's our District Rotary Foundation Vice Chair, and he's with uh, the Rotary Club of Kihei Wailea, joining us from Maui. Um, uh, so just real quick, uh, you know, this is going to be an hour and a half long meeting. So just, uh, you know, everyone knows the rules, but just wanted to kind of let people know, um, you know, this is one thing I noticed. During presentation mode, uh, feel free to turn off your cameras. Uh, they actually, there's a, a recent study from Purdue University that showed how much energy people could save if they uh, turned off their cameras during uh, presentation mode. So something to, something to throw out there, something to try. But uh, if you have some questions, we're gonna divvy up into three different phases. So please just save your questions to that little 20, 30 minute uh, window. Uh, but if you have to interrupt, just please be brief. And uh, you can also use the chat to ask questions too, because I'm sure, You'll have a lot of questions because I certainly did when I, I was first uh, briefed about global grants as well. Uh, so just the, here's a quick timeline. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll spend uh, in a few minutes just kind of going introductions, uh, introducing also the international service team, and uh, then Murray will jump in with an overview of international service, um, as well as Mark talking about the global grants process. I figure there's no point in reinventing the wheel when we have two excellent presentations already kind of established. So we'll let them present. And then ultimately at around 10, 15, uh, we'll kind of present the, the new global grant opportunities for our year that uh, need uh, club support. And um, then we'll adjourn and get on with our, with our day. I believe we also have a, um, another meeting after this as well. So for those of you who need to stick around for that, please do. Uh, so just the international uh, service team for our district, it was actually assembled pretty recently, 2018 by then uh, District International Service Chair Murray Visser. The purpose is to work in an advisory capacity with local clubs. You know, we develop international projects uh, and design global grants, uh, kind of meet the kind of um, standard for Rotary International and also use our local expertise before we could then jump into uh, the, um, those available at the international level as well. But just understand that there's a big spectrum of help, whether it's within your own club, within the district, all the way up to the Rotary International itself. So um, that's kind of the goal is to just kind of exude that, uh, that knowledge and establish those connections and uh, just make sure that we actually can um, build those relationships up. Because I think Rotary is also a big, um, big proponent, obviously, of relationships. So we could develop these relationships, develop this network of experts locally, but also internationally. I think we could get some really outstanding global grants done in our district. So just uh, off the bat here, uh, you know, we kind of built upon uh, the team that uh, Murray had already kind of envisioned and already kind of built. But, uh, you know, I kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm always messing up the, PD, the PDG and DG line here on the right. But uh, uh, kind of threw the, uh, the DGs in there, uh, not, that they're, uh, not that they're actively, you know, involved in our, in our committee, but uh, they also, but they're, because they're very busy, but uh, definitely have interest from, uh, from definitely some select uh, um, uh, Pastor to governor as well as uh, district governor herself, as well as the elected the nominee. But uh, Mark Harbison actually obviously is the backbone, I believe, in addition to Murray of developing this team. Um, I remember back in 2018, uh, Murray, Allen, and I kind of sat at the, at the uh, zippies of Kanohe kind of uh, drafting kind of how we wanted to get this thing going. So uh, Allen was also a, a very big proponent of, uh, of peace as well as uh, a Richard Peace Corps volunteer. Uh, Arjun serves as our district uh, uh, global grants uh, co-chair. Um, and uh, there's also George Kelsey, Sam Bello. Um, uh, George is from uh, the WE Rotary Club. Sam is from uh, uh, Windward Sunrise in Kailua, as well as John Ozust from Hanalei Bay and Mariko Higashi from uh, Lahaina Sunset. So just wanted to welcome those as well as obviously PDG Ross Cooper, who's actually been um, participating in a lot of our meetings. And she also has a, quite a bit of experience, especially with uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, polio uh, immunization day, uh, vaccine days, I believe, and as well as uh, Laura Stilquist, who was actually our um, district Rotary Foundation chair uh, the last few years, and she actually was pretty instrumental in helping us shape this team. Our current um, um, uh, Rotary Foundation, um, our district Rotary Foundation chair is uh, Del Green, who is on our team as well. And um, me to pass this through Governor Naomi Masuno has been helping us with um, actually quite a, quite a few things actually, but primarily, um, you know, we, we actually met a lot with her this past year to actually get our Nepal Bhutan trip going. And, you know, we're still kind of uh, putting that forward, but we're kind of uh, letting some things settle before we could uh, re-announce when exactly that will be. And obviously our current district governor, Sandy Matsui, has been um, kind of definitely participating in our in our meetings. And uh, um, District Governor-elect Randy Hart actually has a project in uh, Fiji that he wants to work on for next year, so we're definitely helping along with. And uh, not last but not least is our District Governor nominee, Mark Merriam, who actually has quite a bit of experience in um, Myanmar. And, uh, you know, obviously if the doors would just open up and um, we could do projects there, I'm sure he'll be the first one to jump in to, to, to go back. Um, and uh, next, I just want to kind of hand the mic over to uh, Mark Harmison. I know he's got some slides as well, Mark. Um, are, are you ready to kind of jump in, Mark? Oh, can you unmute? Sorry. I can. I I I thought Murray was going to present first. Oh, I apologize, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I haven't had enough coffee yet, so I apologize. Uh, yeah, I need uh, more coffee. That's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Murray. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. I actually have your slides uh, here as well. So let me actually go ahead and share the screen. I'll get your slides going. Give me one second. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Huh. I think I have to jump out of full screen mode first. Give me a second here. Okay. All right. Okay. And there you go, Murray. I'll be your slide um, um, mover. So just let me know. All right. Uh, well, actually, I can also move it from slide to slide at my computer too. Oh, uh, would you rather do that? Uh, Murray? Yeah. Okay, let's uh -huh. go ahead and do that. Okay. Great. Um, you, can, you can go ahead and share screen if you need to, Mark, Murray. I, I already set it up. Let's see here. Well, you know what? I think it's better. Oh, hold on. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, the purpose of my presentation is not to really address the big projects like the global grant. Uh, this is really uh, meant for people that have never done a, uh, uh, an international service project or they are have not yet done a global grant, uh, but we would like to do so in the near future. So I will start really, this is really a lot of these projects uh, are much smaller than a global grant. And in fact, some of them, you don't even need to travel to the host country where the project takes place. All right. Uh, James, I can't move to the next slide for some reason. Uh, Murray, uh, you're in control of the slides, so I can't move them for you. Um, okay, I got, to, I got it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Um, there are seven areas to focus if you do want to uh, do a global grant or some other international project. And uh, I think Mark will go into more detail later on on this. But there's peace and conflict prevention and resolution. There is disease prevention and treatment water and sanitation or the acronym WASH, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, economic and community development, and the latest one that was added, I believe last year, supporting the environment. All right, let's start with the, uh, the biggest 
uh, grant, uh, a global grant. It takes a uh, minimum of $30,000 to do one. There's another type of global grant called the VTT, Vocational Training Team. It's a type of global grant that transfers knowledge from the international club to the host club. The international club is the club where the project is being written up and provides all or some of the funding. And the host club is where the project takes place. For a global grant, if you do want to do one, enter your application by 1 November, but do not submit it because you need to get approval, approval of our district before you can submit it. All right, this is the ideal global grant. And I got it from an article in the Rotary Magazine back in November, 2020. What does the ideal global grant application look like? It's one where the host community does a nice job with the community assessment. That one is important. What is a common mistake you see in grant applications? Rotarians should ensure that project falls within the foundation's goal for one of the areas of focus that I just mentioned. What kind of ineligible expenses should people be aware of? Involving community members in a project is one of the best ways to ensure that it is sustainable over the long term. What is the top question you get from the Rotarians? How can we find a partner for our project? You can find it at Rotary Showcase, Project Fairs, and at Rotary Action Group. But I'm gonna add this, since it's not in the article, start with our district, start with our team. Where can Rotarians go for help during the application process? And it, this uh, came from the article, but I underlined it, start in your own district. In other words, start with your team or any other Rotarians that you know in District 5000. All right, uh, here's an example of a global grant is district sponsored for 2021-22. It is done by the Honolulu Sunset Club by Arjun. It is for improving basic education in Nepal, and it's been moved down uh, to the next year be, due to COVID. But, and the one really good thing about this global grant is we're seeking uh, other Rotarians that could help with this project. So this is a, a centerpiece of uh, District 5000 International Service Project. It was sponsored by District Governor Naomi and it will be done in Governor Sandy's year. One of the objectives is to reduce gender-based and caste-based disparity. Empower so-called low caste or untouchable children through basic education. And like I said before, District 5,000 Rotarians will have opportunity to visit the school and involve, be involved in the project. Nine other Rotary clubs in District 5,000 and the UH Rotary Act contributed $46,000 to this project. In other words, if you feel overwhelmed by the idea of having to come up with $30,000 to do the global grant, you don't need to feel that way. Uh, you can just reach out to other Rotary clubs in our district, and you, you'll find some that will help you uh, fund your project. And I did that when I did my global grant. I reached out to other clubs in our project, and in, uh, in no time, I was able to reach the minimum $30,000 required. So don't feel uh, uh, put off by having to come up with $30,000. Others will help you out. and. Uh, like I said, in, th in this project and others, Rotarians can participate in different parts of the project. All right, here are some examples of a global grant. I like to use pictures because they have more of a uh, emotional impact. Uh, this is the proposed global grant or VTT for the Bhutan Wellness Medicine that's uh, going to be done by Dr. James. Uh, this is the train Bhutanese trekking guides in high altitude medical issues to keep mountain climbers safe and to provide work for the guides during the off season. So that uh, this is an ongoing benefit to the host club and the people in Nepal. All right, uh, this is another one done and 
uh, by Dr. James. This is a water and sanitation in Papua New Guinea. And in a couple of years, we'll be, he'll be going back there. And I hope to go with him. I got my travel kit ready for Papua New Guinea. All right, um, Mark Harbison, he does a lot of projects in, in uh, India and other countries. And so he, his specialty in India is the eye clinic in India. And this one was started uh, some years back. And you can see uh, here due to Mark's efforts and other people in India also, uh, the opening of the Carol Bach Rotary Eye Care Center in, in India. All right, here's a, uh, an eye clinic uh, that again, you know, Mark uh, was instrumental in, in getting funding to it. And, uh, and also uh, from uh, other districts besides our own, this is the eye clinic in India. And here you see a good example of people that really benefit from this type of global grant. These, uh, there are still many Indians in India that uh, are extremely poor. And this eye operation cost $25, which is nothing to us, but to the people that you see on that picture, $25 is just about unreachable. And the only way they got this eye operation that saved their eyesight is because of this global grant. Uh, at one time, this was some years back, um, my ship stopped in uh, Bombay and uh, it made an impact on me because I was really little. And I, my mother and I went sightseeing for a few hours in Bombay, which is, today is called Mumbai. And I actually saw people that died from hunger laying right on the, on the sidewalk. And then they would, in the morning, uh, people, the, the, the city would pick up the, the dead bodies, put them in a cart, bring them outside the city and burn them. So, you know, it, it, it's really helpful for those people, for us to be involved in international projects. Okay, here's a close up of uh, some beneficiaries of the um, eye clinic in India. You can see the little boy to the right. He would have lost that one eye if we hadn't prevented finding, funding for it. And there's an older man uh, on the left hand side, same for him. As you all know, last year was the, uh, the COVID year for in 2020, and a lot of uh, funding had to be diverted to help in this emergency. And again, uh, Mark uh, helped with this. And here is an ambulance that we, our district, with other districts, helped purchase. And this ambulance is solely for COVID patients transport them to the clinic to uh, save their lives. All right, this is a global grant for school supplies in Bolivia. It was done by Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay by John Osust. And Dr. James and I and uh, Arjun and Sam and I, we traveled to Honolulu Bay and uh, we met John there. Uh, John, had a particular challenge with this uh, global grant because it, it went on through 2020, the COVID year, but he not only had to deal with the COVID, he had to deal with three changes of government in the same month, which was November, 2020. The government would change from a civilian government to a military government and back to a civilian government. So, but John overcame all of that and he completed this global grant earlier this year. These are the students. These are they're mostly uh, uh, kids without parents, they're orphans. And if they, this funding was not provided to this school, most likely some of these students would not be in that school. They would just be roaming the streets. Okay, uh, we all know Richard Seeger. He's also from Honolulu Sunset. And he, his favorite project is cranial facial malformations in Romania. And here are the, 
some beneficiaries for the for this type of operation. It's in it's it is in uh, done in Romania, and American doctors go there to teach Romanian doctors how to do this type of information. That's why it's called a BTT. You can see the before and after of this young boy, and then. He has a cleft lip. This one has a cleft palate, as you can tell. And here's the the after. So these young kids would not have this uh, benefit if it wasn't for our district and other districts uh, funding this project. All right. I did a global grant in Thailand for COPD. And the reason I did that is because I... Uh, found out when I was there doing another project that 10% of the male ties, they didn't, make, uh, they didn't do a survey on the female ties, but the male ties have COPD. The reason for that is the poor ties, they cook inside their huts. They also burn their rice stubble after they harvest the rice, which is about three times a year now. And so there's a, and they smoke unfiltered cigarettes. So there's a high level of, uh, COVID in Thailand. So here's a patient right there. Uh, I and some others visited the hospital there uh, to do a, uh, some research. And he, he, before we purchased this COPD equipment, the hospital had to use this heavy metal canister, which meant the patients had to stay in the hospital for duration. So we, uh, my club and other clubs in our district and our district, uh, of course, matched our funds and the World Fund matched our funds. So in no time, I was able to get the $34,000 to buy 74 of these new COPD machines. And the big benefit is that they can be uh, used in the home of the patient. So that patient will no longer take up bed space for other patients that have other types of diseases. and. Uh, the host Rotarians over there in Dork Prabrat Club in Lampang, they they keep an eye on this uh, equipment and uh, the hospital there owns this equipment. And I have a whole list of serial numbers that uh, of this equipment so that I have a, you know, I have a way to see where this equipment uh, is uh, because it's going, it's good for about three patients. They, one dies, it goes to the next patient. And then that patient dies, it goes to the third one. So it's good for about three patients, about five. It uh, extends the life span of each patient by about five years. So this equipment is good for about 15 years. So it has long-term benefit. All right. What do you do if you don't want to do a global grant because you don't have the time uh, at the moment or you, you can't, just can't come up with a minimum 30,000? Uh, you can, what you can do is you can do a matching grant. Check the District 5000 website for a list of global grants, or you can check with Mark or James or me or anybody on the team. And uh, that a list of global grants that are done by our very own clubs. And Mark will go into that later. You can uh, also, the benefit is that you can be part of this global grant, even though you're not doing it but you are helping to fund it. And then you can submit also for a district award for this global grant. You can do a district grant for an international project. Most people do it for a, a, a local project. However, uh, uh, I've just you can do it for an international project, but if you do, you must submit it by 1 August. And so I just did one with Carol Acosta at the, in Northern Thailand with the Rotary Club of uh, Mei Chan. And we submitted our district grant application before 1 August, and the money is going to be on the way to in September to purchase uh, computer equipment over there. You can also partner with a non rotary organization such as Shelterbox USA and the Peace Corps. If you want to know how to partner with Peace Corps, ask Alan Kusunoki who was a former Peace Corps member, and he's on our team. All right, what do you do if you still wanna do a project overseas and 
and you don't want to, you know, you don't have the 30,000 or, you, you know, you just can't reach it. Okay, I done one here for $4,000. This is a water and sanitation project in Northern Thailand. It's for a village that's uh, for tribal people. There are two different tribes in that village and is comprised of about 30 families. And uh, uh, I went there and with other people. And we started this water project. And, and here's what it is. The village women every day would have to walk about a quarter mile to get the drinking water, cooking water, and washing water for the village. And I thought, and we all thought, you know, every day walk a quarter mile. Are you kidding me? Just get drinking water? That's a big chunk out of their day. So what we decided to do is lay pipe from the source in the jungle. Uh, and then it will go all the way to the village. So this is the beginning part right here where you see where the boy is standing. This is how the village women would have to walk to get to the source of the water. Although I think they did find a shortcut. Okay, this is where the pipe ends in the village. And now you can see the, 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 the tribal people can have the water without walking to the source a quarter mile away. Uh, this project took a bit of a challenge in that the tribal people did not ha know how to speak Thai. They were refugees from Myanmar, Burma, and Laos and other places, Yunnan. And, uh, and there were two different tribes who spoke different languages. But you know, if you persevere in doing these international projects, you can overcome just about any obstacle. So we found a man who could speak English, Thai, and the tribal dialect. So that, uh, that was a real help. He was a real help. All right, uh, here's another very low cost project. It cost my club only $500. This is Carol Acosta. She's really big on uh, helping young women and girls in Northern Thailand because they get trafficked a lot um, out of Burma and other places, other bordering countries. And these girls were trafficked, hard to believe, by their own uncle. He sold his two nieces and the, and the money that he got, he bought, built himself a house in Myanmar. And uh, this is, so, and then they were made to wear these heavy uh, brass bracelets so that they look like they're members of the Karen tribe. But rescue, but Carol right there and this Catholic nun, uh, Carol's a Rotarian. They rescued these two girls and and they not only rescued the girls, but put them in a in a dorm, school dorm, where they're safe and can continue their education to eventually become independent, self-supporting uh, people. All right, you can do things like participate in a Rotary International Exchange Program, and there are a number of these. There's the International Travel and Hosting Fellowship. Pass this to Governor. Steve Yoshida, he's really uh, at the forefront of this. There are group cultural exchanges. There are rotary friendship exchanges. People from other countries can visit you and vice versa. There are new generation exchanges. There's the open world program with Eastern European countries and Russia uh, with past district governor Steve Yoshida and Winton in the fall of 2018. We hosted about eight Russians and for about eight days, uh, some days on Oahu and some on the Big Island. And you'll see some pictures later on. There's a youth exchange program that you can do. And so in other words, some of these projects, even though they're international projects, if you don't have the time, you do not need to travel to that host country. All right, friendship exchange teams. The culture experiences that highlights a region's ethnicity, food, language, history, and more. Their service opportunities for hands-on projects, involvement, and support. It's a good way to uh, find Rotarians in a host country, and they'll give you ideas on how to do projects in their country. And exploring similar or specific professions or jobs in a different cultural context. 
I have found out after having done a number of these projects and having actually lived in seven different countries, that cultural context is of supreme importance. You got to know the culture of that other country and you can't just do it by Googling it. I'm pretty straightforward about it. It takes years to actually know the cultural context of the country of the project that you want to do in. All right, um, Rotary Friendship Exchanges. So the Open World Program, as I mentioned, it was done by uh, past district governor, Steve and Winton, and I helped him on that. And so did Mark Merriam and uh, some other Rotarians. It is to build, build goodwill, foster peace, and strengthen international friendship. So these eight Russians came here and we hosted them here. We had a great time with them and they had a great time being in Hawaii. All right, it is a close up of uh, the Russians. There's, uh, we invited them to a dinner at the Halekoa. All right, there's the International Travel and Hosting Fellowship. This is, you, you know, this is a very relaxed project to do. Uh, I needed to go to Thailand more than once to, to learn about that COPD project and get to know the Thais there better. And here they are on one of the trips that were waiting for us at the Chiang Mai airport, the host Rotarians, the Thai Rotarians. They were welcoming, welcoming us there. Uh, I did a new generation exchange program again with two Thai students and here, uh, eight different Rotary clubs in our district got involved in this. And here they are at Lori Williams's house having a nice dinner. And here are the two Thai students right there in the front. Bridget and I, we hosted Irina Dogadina. A number of you who know who she is, she's from Russia and she stayed with us. And then onto the big island and stayed there with uh, Steve and his wife. Uh, Irina became a really good friend. She's a really good Rotarian also. All right, you can do banner exchanges. You can see uh, Dr. James is right in the middle there doing a banner exchange with his wife in uh, Timfu, Bhutan. And this banner exchange uh, led to the global project, a global grant that he wants to do in, in Bhutan, which is to train the trekking guides there. Okay, you can start a sister club and you can read this for yourself. Uh, I need to say that if you start a sister club, let's say with a club in Asia, they take it really seriously. They see that this as a long-term uh, uh, connection and that goes over years and years. When you go to their club, let's say in Taiwan or Japan, they will roll out the red carpet for you. but of course, there, we'd have to roll out the red carpet for them when they come here. So this is more of a uh, long-term project and it's more formal. Okay, where can you get ideas to, for your project? If you wanna do one, you can go to International Project Fair. This one is, again, Steve Yoshida went there in Ecuador. That was a few years ago before the COVID, needless to say. All right, you can also, and you can uh, nominate uh, people for global scholarships. It's due by 1 May. It's funded with global grants and district grants, and it's for graduate level coursework. You can nominate somebody to be a Rotary World Peace Fellow, and that the nomination needs to be done by 31 May. So if you wanted to do this, who do you contact? Easy. Uh, again, contact Alan Kusunoki. Okay, um, there's a major field peace and conflict resolution. Again, you want to talk to Mark Harbison, Alan Kusunoki, and Steve Yoshida. Uh, you can join the Rotary Action Group for Peace. They give it to see their purpose. Uh, you can more powerfully implement a Rotary International Peace and Conflict Prevention Resolution area of focus in your club build stronger and more harmonious communities and assist in the 
accomplishment of Rotary's mission to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace. And we all know this world could use more peace. All right. Uh, past this to Governor Steve Yoshida in 2013. He organized and uh, the peace conference right here in Honolulu. And the main speaker was Aung San Suu Kyi, who is a member of the uh, government in Myanmar. She's a civilian member of uh, the, the government. Uh, the Congress there is really uh, run by the military, but she is the one civilian person. She got the peace prize for peace. And uh, she was the main speaker there. So past this to Governor Anurak came with his club. And uh, the reason I mentioned him is because he was my host partner with doing uh, a global grant with his club. All right. I found this amazingly enough. They say this plaque in Japanese says, pray for peace. And uh, it is to commemorate Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I found this on a wall in a castle in Germany, Hambacher Schloss. That's why I took a picture. Hambacher Schloss is dedicated to peace and democracy. And uh, it's in Northern Germany. All right, we have, a, as James just mentioned, we have an international service team. And uh, the purpose is, and I, I got this from the Rotary International website actually, working with local clubs to develop international projects and design global grants of higher quality and greater scale. Establishing connections between clubs in a district and a host or international partner and creating a network of local experts, us, to help with the projects. We are in an advisory capacity. All right, here are the people on the team and uh, you can see who they are. I, uh, the, this is on the district website, I believe. And my entire, the, my entire presentation here, I have a synopsis in two pages. I will send it to you if you wish. I will put my email in the chat and it's, it's only two pages and it, was, it summarizes my entire uh, presentation. The district international service team is internet interested in your success with international projects. All right, so a few references, uh, the Rotary Action Groups, you can go to the district international website for that. They'll get you, they can get you started, find out more information. For technical information, you can go to the Rotary Foundation of Cadre of Technical Coordinators, but we have some on our own team. We have George Kelsey, who is a former Navy CB. Navy CBs can do anything in a short period of time. They can lay down an entire airfield in a matter of days. And that's exactly what George has done. And he's also been in a civilian capacity, building very large uh, uh, water stills to turn seawater into sweet water in, in the Middle East. So George is one of the people to go to. Of course, with medical projects, you want to go to Dr. James and Dr. Paul and, and other doctors in our district. All right, if you have any questions, uh, just contact Dr. James, he's the team leader now, and the District International Service Chair, Mark Harbison, the Rotary Foundation Chair, and then me and other people on the team. So if anybody has any questions, go ahead, or you can put the questions in the chat and I will answer them. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you, Murray. Um, just kind of uh, going through the screen here, please raise your hand if you have any questions. Um, there are no dumb questions. There's a lot of questions. Um, there's a lot of questions that uh, come to mind. If Sometimes when we have too many questions, you don't have a question, right? So in that case, I see Adrian's hand. Adrian. Go ahead. All right, I'll ask, can you hear me? 
<clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, if I wanted to, uh, in the past, uh, I've just recommended uh, money from our club to match uh, global grants. And Mark Harbison has uh, suggested that I, I do more. And I've been teasing him about that mercilessly. And he teases me back. Uh, I'm, I'm open to doing that, but I I don't want to do it on my own. I'd like to like co-chair or something with someone to learn the, the ropes step-by-step step to sort of partner with someone so that, you know, eventually I could probably do it on my own, but I, and I know that the team will help me. So that I'm just putting that out there that I'm willing to do that, even though, again, I'm going to tease Mark uh, but but I'd like a, a partner or something. I'm, so I'm just throwing that out there. And we've got our club this year has got we've got over eleven thousand dollars with matching to give. So uh, I'm going to be very interested in what all the different projects are to see how we distribute that those funds, either all to one project or uh, breaking it up. Anyway, that's all. Adrian, I just wanted to thank you uh, for for stepping up and asking that question, and also, um, you know, wanting to take the next step forward. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, you know hesitancy with people um, jumping in, and you know, I've worked with you, um, you know, pretty uh, well over the last three years. Uh, specifically, introduced to you by Richard Ziegar, who actually worked with you even before that. And uh, obviously, he's uh, you know having him move to Florida was a huge loss to us, but uh, at the same time, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, step up and. Uh, Take over some of that role that he's uh, kind of that you know that that void he's left. So definitely looking forward to you. Thanks for uh, being willing to. I'll be happy to uh, meet with you. Um, you know, um, you know, obviously, you know, in any way, in any capacity to help you on. And uh, we definitely have some opportunities for you to get involved. And in, uh, when I talk about the uh, opportunities for global grants, uh, we could definitely uh, touch more after that as well. But um, it'll be uh, after uh, Mark's talk, and then I'll talk about the specific opportunities. Okay. We could actually let you know. And, Again, I, I think that's kind of the, I kind of saved that for the end because I wanted, uh, yeah, no. um, you know, it's kind of like the, the little surprise <laughs> at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay. thank you again. I really appreciate you. We appreciate all of your support for all the, the gold brands you, you and your club have supported. So thank you. And I'm just kind of perusing uh, the screen if anyone else has any questions. Uh, if not, we could uh, just move on with uh, Mark. Uh, if that's okay with you, Mark. Uh, hopefully, got hopefully got the order right this time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, oh, uh, uh, last but not, I just wanted to jump in. My, uh, I think Dave Mosier and Mark already beat me to it, but uh, at the end of his talk, I wanted to kind of wish Murray a happy birthday. Uh, it is his birthday today, so thank you for joining us, uh, Murray, on your birthday today. So I uh, just want to throw that in there real quick. Thank you, James. <laughs> Happy birthday, Murray. <laughs> Thank you. So are we, are we ready to go? Yes, it's all you, Mark. Sorry. Oh, OK. Here we go. Uh, just let me say that uh, this presentation will be up on, on the uh, uh, foundation website under grants, under global grants. And I'll be explaining how to find that pretty soon. Uh, I'm actually going to expand on this presentation a little bit before I post it. So it'll be up in a couple of days, at least by Monday, I'll have it up. Uh, so I'm gonna get started now. Uh, the main purpose of this presentation is to sort of update you on changes in the funding model for the Rotary Foundation and how that's going to affect our projects going, going forward. Uh, so let me get started. Uh, this is a little background. Uh, the Rotary Foundation funded more than 2,000 global grants in 2021. Uh, that is an absolute record. And uh, the photograph you're looking at is Ravi Rabindran, who was the, is the outgoing Rotary, uh, chair of the Rotary Foundation trustees. And so he reported on this in Twitter 
and said that together we have funded more than 2,000 global grants that have empowered Rotary members around the world to take on projects they care about and make a difference in their communities. Your generosity has also helped us raise more than $440 million for the Rotary Foundation. Unbelievable. It is the highest ever. So, you know, of course, the Rotary Foundation Committee would love for us to beat that record again this year and uh, to continue funding all of our international projects and our, and our district grants. But today we're talking about international projects. So here are the Rotary's areas of focus. Uh, I'll be speaking a lot about how those relate to uh, major foundations in the world, including the United Nations and one of our uh, strategic partners, the International Institute for Economics and Peace. Uh, the Rotary areas of focus, beginning with peace at the very top, the major area of focus that 75% of funding goes to is disease prevention and treatment. And that also is true in our district. A lot of our grants go to this area of focus. Uh, another area of focus, the new one, uh, environment, promoting the environment. Uh, the one with all the little coins stacked up on the left is community and economic development. And of course, the other big gorilla in the room, wash rack, uh, water and sanitation, a very popular area of focus. Uh, and two of the kind of orphans, basic education and literacy. And that's an area that Arjun has been really active in in Nepal and with grants sponsored by our district. And finally, uh, maternal and child health, uh, an area of focus that is very close to my heart, uh, and another one that is neglected. I'll speak about that more later. Uh, here's a breakdown of where the money goes. Uh, as you can see, uh, disease prevention and treatment, 729 grants for close to $60 million. Uh, the other big one, uh, is obviously water and sanitation. It gets uh, 15 million. Uh, peace gets only 2 million, two and a half million. And maternal and child health, 8 million. Uh, you can see how they break down. Disease prevention and treatment is a big, big area of focus. And so is watch, uh, water and sanitation are also big areas of focus in the Rotary Foundation. Okay, the new one uh, that everybody is enthusiastic about, especially in our district, supporting the environment. The big news is that beginning on July 1st of this year, we can now do global grants in the new area of focus. Uh, the terms and condition and the description of the area of focus is available on the Rotary, uh, rotary.org website under global grants. And I'll show you how to find those in just a moment. Okay, the Rotary Areas of Focus and the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I, I would ask for a show of hands where everyone has their video turned off. Uh, it's important to know that the Rotary Foundation, one of our goals uh, in terms of public image, in terms of our contribution to what else is going on in the world is to align the Rotary, of, Rotary Areas of Focus uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals. And, you know, if you look at this chart, this was first presented in Hamburg by Peter Kyle, who was the great Dean of International Projects uh, in the Rotary Foundation. Uh, it's very obvious that peace aligns with Goal 16, which is peace, justice, and strong institutions. Uh, WASH, uh, Sustainable Development Goal number six aligns with water and sanitation. Goal number 13 aligns with our area of focus promoting the environment, uh, good health and well being, obviously, disease prevention and treatment. So the, the uh, Rotary Foundation is very conscious of our alliance with the United Nations, 
and all of the United Nations agencies. And so the areas of focus align very closely with the Sustainable Development Goals. Here they are. These are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. These are the targets to achieve by 2030. And of course, we are far, far behind and COVID-19 has set us even further back. And so uh, we really need to work on achieving all of these goals by using Rotary Foundation grants. Another of our strategic partners is the Institute for Economics and Peace. Uh, there are eight pillars of positive peace. And again, the Rotary areas of focus align very closely with these pillars of peace. When I did my uh, Institute for Economics and, and Peace ambassador uh, application process, I had to discuss how one of our global grants uh, would help to achieve the eight pillars of positive peace. And so, and I was able to do that with the project we're do doing in the Delhi slums uh, on vocational training. So also an important area to think about when you're designing global grants. Okay, a lot of new developments in the Rotary Foundation World Fund uh, funding model. So there were two decisions made last year that affect how we do uh, global grants. The first one is that there is no longer matching for club cash. So when we provide our matching for our DDF, we will still get the DDF match for our club cash, but we will not get the 50% match from the Rotary Foundation World Fund. So keep that in mind. It means that we need to raise more cash and we need to do more giving to the Rotary Foundation so that our district receives more DDL. The second decision that was made last year is that there is no longer a minimum $15,000 uh, World Fund requirement. Uh, all that means is that we need more cash. If you have less DDF in your mix, uh, obviously you've got to come up with more with more money. So the example that Ravi gives is that if the budget is $30,000, you could have $5,000 in DDF, $5,000 in World Fund, but then you would need $20,000 in cash. Uh, so those decisions had been made already last year. And so they affected grants uh, in 2021, uh, but they will definitely affect us this year. So there were two new decisions made and let me give you the background on that. Uh, the first decision was that uh, polio plus funds would be matched only 50%. So we still need to reach the $50 million uh, in order to uh, get the, great, the Gates Foundation match. But what will happen now is that if we give $20,000 in DDF for polio plus, we only get $10,000 from the World Fund. The Gates Foundation match will then be 60,000 because it will match 20,000 of DDF plus the World Fund match, but the Gates Foundation match will be 60,000. So we'll get 90,000 for polio eradication. Um, so that's one of the new rules. The second is that, uh, oh, let me discuss polio plus a little bit. The current goal that is proposed by Shekhar Mehta, our new Rotary International President, is that we have $1,500 from each club in order to reach $150 million total, including the Gates Foundation match. Uh, Ravi just reported on Twitter and I probably on the Rotary International website, we did meet the uh, $50 million goal last year in 2021 by $27,000. So it was a bit of a squeaker last year. And of course, Shekhar would like to do much, much better this year. But for now, the goal is to reach $50 million so that we have a, you know, that we get the two for one match from the Gates Foundation. Uh, the good news is that uh, we have our new Rotary International team for Polio Plus. Of course, uh, Michael McGovern is still 
the head of the Polio Plus team. Uh, but Jennifer Jones has joined as the uh, Rotary International Dominee as president. And of course, uh, past Rotary International President John Durham has joined the Rotary Foundation trustees and is now on the uh, International Polio Plus team. And then uh, past Rotary International Director Robert Hall has also joined the team. But the good news is that the Taliban has met with uh, WHO leaders and they have agreed to continue the polio eradication program. And the really good news is that there was only one case of wild polio virus in Afghanistan in 2020-21. Uh, there was also only one case in Pakistan. So both of those projects are still running. They still, they have the approval of the Taliban to continue with the uh, WHO program. And uh, uh, Mike McGovern wanted everyone to know that Rotary is not funding the Taliban. Rotary only funds WHO and UNICEF in polio. So the money is not going to the Taliban. It is going to the World Health Organization and UNICEF. Uh, but we are still looking for $1,500 for each club. We really need to keep polio going. And that is still the major corporate project of the Rotary Foundation. Um, OK. The second decision that was made uh, that affects this year is that they have reduced the World Fund match for DDF from 100% to 80%. So this little graphic that I have done sort of shows how it impacts our district. So <clears throat> looking at just the DDF, uh, if our district gives $20,000 in, in DDF, so if a number of clubs contribute their DDF, we'll get an 80% World Fund match uh, for the DDF, uh, which is $36,000 for the global grant. That is more than enough to finish the global grant. In our district, our clubs match our DDF contribution. Now keep in mind, we're not getting uh, a World Fund match for the cash contribution. But if we match our DDF with $20,000, then our total for the global grant will be $50,000. Uh, so we can still, and also there's no minimum on the World Fund match. So we can still make up uh, for the DDF difference by putting in more money for the, uh, for, from our cash, uh, from our club cash. So keep that in mind going forward. So we are, now there is a reason for that which is that the Global Grant Program is so popular. As I mentioned before, we did 4,000 Global Grants uh, last year. When we started this program, there were 887 Global Grants. This was back in 2013, uh, when they introduced the new uh, Global Grants model. Uh, the last year there were 4,000 global grants. So you can imagine the, uh, the World Fund is growing at the rate of about 7% a year. So if the, if the demand for global grants is growing exponentially and the, and the money for global grants and the World Fund is growing by only 7%, then obviously we're outrunning our funding sources. And that's the reason for the uh, restructuring of the World Fund that I described uh, just now. Uh, okay, one more development. Uh, this program of scale grants uh, program was introduced last year. And the, uh, the grant that was selected for last year was a project in Ethiopia to eliminate malaria. And these programs of scale grant are intended to bring in other foundation other large foundations to partner with the Rotary Foundation. In the case of Ethiopia, that worked out very well because USAID came in for $2 million and World Vision came in for $2 million. So the $2 million grant from the Rotary Foundation generated $6 million for the grant in Ethiopia to eliminate polio 
not polio, I'm sorry, to eliminate malaria in that country. So this was a major, major uh, public image coup by the Rotary Foundation involving major foundations that are also operating in this, in this space of, uh, of giving. So absolutely fantastic program. So they decided it was a pilot program last year. They've, they've decided to make it a permanent program and any district can apply. Uh, it's a fairly complicated process, which uh, I'm going to skip. There, I'm putting the requirements up on the screen, but I'm sorry. Uh, it's a multi-year program. It benefits a large number of people, aligns with an area of focus. The World Fund is awarded it's for $2 million. It's one grant. Uh, it's competitive, obviously. Uh, it requires implementation with a partner organization. So as I said, it's uh, uh, intended to bring in a major foundation as a partner, at least one, and it's a competitive process. There's more information about this on the Rotary International website. Okay, let's get into the mechanics uh, of applying for a grant. First of all, I want to really encourage you all to use the district website. Uh, if you go to uh, d5000.org uh, and click on Foundation and Grants, you'll get a drop-down screen that looks like this. When you click on Grants, there is a page for district grants, there is a page for global grants, and there is a grant for peace fellowships, and then there is also uh, a drop-down menu for promoting peace. Okay, so I want to go back to that slide. I'm sorry. Um, if you look on the right sidebar, there are all the links that you need for information about global grants. So our global grant commitments for 21-22, uh, uh, new district uh, global grant commitments for 2021. This is in case you have grants that were held over. Uh, there's also a link to the new grants fund funding model, a present presentation from the Rotary Foundation. Uh, there are uh, webinars from the April, April 17th spring training. There is all kinds of information in the sidebar. So take a look there and take advantage of these rotaryd5000.org resources to get information about global grants. Uh, it's all there, so just take a look. Um, then the next step is to go to the Rotary International website. And what you want to do on your home screen, once you've logged in, you will get a menu that looks like this. You want to click on take action and then go down to apply for grants. And then there's a whole menu on the other side, depending on what kind of grant you want to do from district grants, global grants, disaster grants, if you want information, the cadre of technical advisor is available there. More information about the programs of scale grants. But for information about global grants, you want to go to the grant center at the very top. And once you do that, you'll get a screen that looks like this. So to start your global grant, you want to go up to the top menu and click on apply for a grant. It will ask you what kind of grant, district grant, global grant, disaster grant. Uh, and so if you wanna do a global grant, click on global grant and it will take you to the application. It will help you walk you right through it. The other things you look at on this homepage of the uh, grant center is grant resources. Again, on the right sidebar, there are all kinds of links to information about, about global grants. There's a supplement on microcredit. If you want to know if your grant uh, is, is uh, eligible under the areas of focus, here is an areas of focus policy statement where my cursor is. That will tell you what the eligibility requirements are for each one of the areas of focus. If you want to begin a community assessment, there is a, a link to the community assessment form that will get you started. 
memorandum of understanding. There's even a grant application template. So if you don't want to dive in to a global grant application, you can begin with this template and you can go through and use it as a worksheet. So it makes your life very much more and much simpler. And, uh, you know, so this is where the information is. If you want to look at our grants, this is the, and this is at my grants. Uh, this is the screen I see when I open up the Global Grant Center. Uh, you all won't see all of this, but these are the grants that were involved in this year. And I'll go through them all in a little bit more detail. What I wanted to call your attention to is that if you want to find a grant that the District 5000 is involved in, go up to the top of the screen and click on Grant Search. And there you can find all of the projects that Rotary 5000 is involved in now and in the past. So if you're interested in what kind of grants we've done, this is the place to look. Or you can go back to the district website and find all those grants there. Okay? So uh, I'm going to go through quickly. I, James is going to be discussing this in a little more detail. But I'm going to go through quickly some of the grants we're involved in this year. Now, keep in mind, it's only the end of August. We still have two months until November 1st. Uh, for, for you guys to bring in new global grants, grants that you're working on, grants your sister clubs are working on. You know, there's still lots of time. But these are the grants that we know about now that are already in the works. Uh, the first one is a global grant that I'm working on in the Delhi slums. Uh, it's a $134 million grant. A lot of that will be funded by our sister district in Japan, District 2650. And uh, one of my sister clubs, Nara East, uh, but uh, this is in the Delhi, in the slums of Delhi. Delhi, uh, we did a very large grant last year in Delhi, uh, working on vocational training in a slum in Delhi. We actually scaled that up to the entire city. Uh, we also have an extensive network of Rotary Eye Centers in Delhi, and so what we're going to do with this grant is train health workers uh, who are working on COVID-19 and polio to also screen for vision problems uh, in the slums. And there are lots of vision problems because of the poor sanitation commitments, but especially for children needing glasses and cataracts and candidates for cataract or glaucoma surgery. Two years ago, we did a grant to buy advanced uh, glaucoma surgery equipment for our Rotary uh, Eye Center in Delhi. Uh, they can now do glaucoma surgeries. So we're looking, uh, we're asking the health workers to look for candidates for both cataracts and also for glaucoma. Another grant, uh, obviously we're back in Nepal. Uh, we're very excited about this grant because it participates in the, uh, the Watch in Schools program of the Rotary Foundation. So uh, Arjun and, and uh, hopefully Adrian King will be working on this grant. Uh, it's in WASH, in the WASH area of focus. So they will do uh, uh, both clean water, sanitation and hygiene in five schools in Snowwala uh, Muki, Nepal. And Arjun can jump in and correct my pronunciation. Uh, but Jay will be working with the Rotary Club of Narayangar. Uh, Arjun has a very close connection. And in fact, the entire international services team has a very close connection with the district governor, now past district governor in Nepal, but also the, uh, the leader of this grant in Narayangar, the Rotary Club. Uh, so that'll be our, uh, one of our grants in Nepal. Uh, Honolulu Sunset also has a project uh, which a lot of people will be excited about in Palau, Pompeii, and Chuck. Um, so we'll be working with three Rotary clubs in two countries. This is called the Super Project. Uh, and I Super Project uh, refers, uh, it's a, it's a, the grant will be providing uh, pediatric uh, EMS resuscitation crash cards 
in three hospitals in, uh, on the different islands. Uh, it's another big grant. The budget is yet to be determined, but uh, the contact for that is Dr. Paul Moros of the Honolulu Sunset Club. Uh, this is the first time that Paul is doing our global grant. And so we're very excited about this grant. Also as an island state, we're obviously close to these island nations. Hawaii uh, uh, coordinates Medicare for and Medicaid for these islands on behalf of the federal government. So there's a very close relationship between uh, Hawaii and the Republic of Palau and the uh, Micronesian states. So uh, we're very excited about this grant. Uh, another global grant is, uh, uh, is James Hams's grant in Papua New Guinea. Another very exciting grant. Uh, he's going to be providing uh, uh, ultrasound equipment in four hospitals in four different regions of uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, ultrasound is such a great technology. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the equipment that, that James is going to be provided are actually handheld uh, uh, ultrasound machines that are very flexible and can, they're especially useful for trauma. And they're also uh, extremely useful for prenatal care for pregnant mothers. Uh, and as Dr. James points out, according to the World Health Organization, Papua, Papua New Guinea has the lowest physician per capita in the world. Uh, and I have a misspelling there, I'll have to change. Uh, uh, another grant that we're doing, uh, of course, James, uh, Mr. David Mustard is back with a uh, grant with Honolulu Sunrise and the Rotary Club of Salon in Northern Thailand. Uh, they haven't worked out the budget yet, but they're going to be another life-saving project with medical equipment in Thailand. Um, and uh, finally, uh, Bill Green and our friend Jean-Louis Nguyenchi are doing a project in Bangkok in Northern Thailand, again, for uh, medical equipment for a hospital in uh, Lampang province in Northern Thailand. And an exciting project, I wanna finish off with this one. Uh, this is a project that is being worked on by Ari Radeva in the Honolulu Santa Club. It's with uh, two clubs in uh, Russia. Moscow East is leading the project. It's going to provide verticalizers for uh, uh, treatment of cerebral palsy in uh, five hospitals in Russia. And these, ver these vertical stabilizers are absolutely amazing. They enable cerebral palsy uh, patients who are confined to wheelchairs to actually stand up on their own within six months and within a year to walk on their own with only the help of a cane. The other neat thing about this grant is that it's being facilitated by the US-Russia Intercountry Committees. And I don't know how many of you attended the uh, Rotary International Convention pre-convention for this year, but the theme was uh, inter intercountry committees. And uh, both Ari and Wynne Schoenemann have been active on the US-Russia uh, Intercountry Committee. And so they are, they've been in touch with uh, this Rotary Club in Moscow East and the uh, Intercountry Committee has been active in coordinating this grant. So that's it for me. We'll get to questions and comments after uh, James Ham does the wrap up. And I'll stop screen sharing and we'll go back to the main session. Uh, hey, hey, thanks everybody. Thanks, Mark. Um, any questions for Mark specifically uh, over this global grant section here? Mark, you did such an amazing job, like you always do. Uh, no need, no questions, I'm assuming. <laughs> but uh, we do see some people here. We see Andy. Uh, actually, one thing I did want to uh, kind of wrap up, if you guys don't mind, um, I pretty much have the same slides that Mark uh, uh, put up. Um, you know, there's uh, obviously this is what happens when when I last minute prep, but I really appreciate Mark actually going into more detail about those projects that we're presenting. 
Um, I do have a spreadsheet of those uh, that we'll put up uh, on the website for you as well. But one thing I just want to add is that uh, Andy Chamberlain is here, and he's actually an, an engineer with the uh, Army Corps. I'm sorry, the Army, U.S. Army, actually. He's actually at Fort Leonard Wood joining us here um, in Missouri, but he's actually, um, you know, going to be working on that uh, water project in uh, Nepal uh, as well. And I believe he's going to be taking the lead. Um, but, uh, you know, Adrian, other other club members, I mean, I'm sorry, other members from other clubs, if you're interested, uh, the uh, Papua New Guinea project is also open for someone else who wants to jump in and take lead on it. I'd be happy to be the first uh, to hold hands and mentor and, and move on to. And I, I, the reason why I say that is that it's a very straightforward project, uh, primarily because we're, we're buying equipment and uh, we're having people uh, train up and use it. And um, that's pretty much it. It's a, it doesn't require, you know, building technical stuff. It literally just requires, uh, you know, shipping equipment off that's going to be used and it's already being used there. So it's not a new technology for them. It's just the device itself is relatively new, but the start of is pretty quick. So some people are interested in that. But um, lastly, just wanted to um, touch base on the, uh, uh, the Russia project. Our own Dr. Paul Moroz is actually a uh, orthopedic spine surgeon uh, at Shriners, and he's actually gone through that um, project pretty in depth. And I know it's a, a project that's not um, originating or uh, you know officially um, lead partnering in our district, but it is a project that's been vetted. It sounds like it's uh, uh, very useful and can actually influence and impact uh, young children in a different part of the world that uh, our district uh, may not have uh, previously worked in. So I just think having some of these new ventures is, is uh, exciting. And obviously, um, you know, Dave Osram is here as well to talk about, uh, um, you know, if you're hearing questions about his grant uh, in, in Thailand, I know that uh, Honolulu Sunrise has a very good track record working on this project in Thailand. And just like how Mark has a good track record working on, on, on blindness in India, across from India, um, um, Dave and uh, the Rotary Club of Honolulu Sunrise actually has a, a very good track record. So it kind of depends, you know, if you want a project that is going to be impactful for sure, you know, that's going to work, that actually has a very good, um, you know, impact uh, for your dollar. You know, pick those pick those projects. If you have projects that you're more interested in other parts of the world, uh, consider those projects. Um, you know, new technologies, new things. You know, I think it all depends on what your cup of tea is. You know, and I think in the end, we're at the point of um, uh, the you know, unfortunately, in this time of COVID, where you know um, we don't have a lot of dollars to spend amongst our club. You know, it's hard to get that club cash. It's hard to get our fundraisers going. Uh, so, you know, definitely want to make sure that your your dollar that you invest in, uh, in, in national service projects actually has a high impact. So I'm glad that uh, the key people here for the project, I don't see Paul Moroz, but I'll be happy to speak on his behalf. And it's actually really nice to see some of the international service team members here, uh, including uh, Arjun and uh, Mariko and, and uh, Ron Cooper and some others here that are here. So definitely thank you for joining us. On, you know that we are a cadre here to field questions uh, specifically about the grant process itself, but also about the technical aspects of the grant as well. Oh, I see Adrian's hand up. I'm not sure if she's uh, <laughs> raising her hand to talk. <laughs> oh, my uh, my son is, is installing new lights and. Um... I said you could drill a hole instead of having the wires because I'm trying to I'm on my laptop instead of the desktop and so the lighting isn't that good if I moved over but I this one's got uh, headphones so it's easier <clears throat> needless to say I mean it was all tremendous wonderful information it's a bit overwhelming but I think what I'm getting from you uh, James is just find one that you're interested in or that you like or something. And I don't know, I'll be talking with you more and with Mark Moore and uh, and with Arjun about me personally, what to do and then our club. Um, so like I said, I think, you know, a lot of, you can spread the money around, but then I'm also looking at like, well, if, if our 11,000 from our club, which we were very fortunate from years past to have that money had been to be able to match, to give it to one project where it's really going to put it over the top and make a difference. And so uh, I'm still, I'll, I know we're having a session on Monday and uh, because then we're having a board meeting and I'm going to have to make a recommendation to the board. So I'll be talking to you about that more and Mark and Arjun. 
anyway, that's enough for now. That's my son fuddling around. It's okay. Dave, do, do you have an update on your Thailand grants? Dave Mosser. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to go off mute. Um, I have been working with Sam over in Thailand and we do have more updates. I'll send them out to you as soon as I um, get that finalized, but it's, it's for um, another hospital in rural Thailand in Chang Kong Hospital. And it's uh, again, more medical equipment for a rural hospital that is in dire needs of additional equipment for operating rooms. And um, I'll, uh, the budget's around $39,000, but that's still being tweaked a little bit, but that's yeah. already been started. The process has been started already from um, Sam for the submission into RI. So that should be coming out fairly quickly. Yeah, send me that and I'll put it in the slide before I, before I post it. All right, thank you. Mariko has a question. Yeah, uh, James, I, I have a question you know, uh, about um, exchange programs. Can we use any district or global grants in the, for exchange programs? And I'm saying this because you know, if you want to invite somebody from developing countries, of course, and visa is a, an, another issue, but the cost of travel and lodging and so on will be pretty expensive. Can we use those district or global grants? I'll, I'll defer to Mark, go ahead. Yeah, you cannot use a global grant, but you can use a uh, uh, district grant, not for airfare though, uh, but you could use it for uh, accommodations. Okay, if they're libertarian, for... yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, how about the youth? Uh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, any but, youth program, yeah, for sure. But they are not Rotarians. Uh, that might be a problem. <laughs> ah, okay. So it has to be Rotarians and uh, accommodations. You know, for a district grant, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, as if, if it, you know, if it's for an exchange. Okay. Okay. All right. Just no, I don't have any specific ideas, but I or thought even, you know, because you know, even if they're refugees, uh, you know that would work as well. Hmm. Okay, something to think about. Thank you, Mariko. Go ahead, Marie. Uh, Mariko, if you do an open world program uh, with an Eastern European country or, or Russia, the federal our federal government will pay for it. That's true. Interesting. Yeah. So there are other people who can pay for them. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, like the one that Steve Yoshida and Winton and I and others did with the Russians in the fall of 2018, that was entirely paid for by our federal government. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and also, Mariko, you can contact uh, uh, the uh, International uh, Travel and Hosting Fellowship. And Steve Yoshida has a whole network of people who will host uh, families when they come to uh, Hawaii. Mm. Okay. And, 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 Mur and Murray, how did your club uh, handle that uh, uh, student uh, youth exchange program uh, with the kids from Thailand? Oh, well, I, I knew a Thai Rotarian in Lampang, same club, Dorbar. Dort Prabhat has a one where past this to Governor Anurak is in. Uh, and um, they, that Rotarian reached out to me when I happened to be in their club meeting when I was there. And then she asked me if I wanted to host two Thai students. And I said, sure. And that's how that started. And then when they, and they, 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 they were here for a whole month and there's no way I could have the time to host them the entire month. So eight other, about eight other Rotary Clubs in our district got involved where, you know, a few days here and there for different Rotarians to host these two young men. So that, that was pretty, they reached out to us. Naomi, go ahead. So the youth exchange program is suspended until June, 2022, but for friendship exchange, we did one with Russia and we did it virtually. 
So you can look for virtual exchanges. One of the few positive consequences of COVID, right? <laughs> Um, trying to think of any any other questions. You know, we're, we have a couple of minutes. Doesn't mean we have to stay until 10:30. But uh, um, uh, definitely, if you have any questions offline, definitely, Adrian, I'll definitely touch base with you offline too. But uh, you know, Murray, uh, Murray, Mark, um, anybody else have anything else? Uh, please go ahead. If not, thanks for spending your morning with us. Um, yeah, and uh, just let us know if there's anything else we can help with. Well, now, some, there's another presentation on Monday. Was it Monday at 7 at night? What is that? I think that Mark told me that's that's slightly different than this. Could you explain that? Yeah, you know what, Adrian, we, we have, an, uh, we have with the beginning of the new uh, Rotary year, we have a new foundation team headed by Dill Green. And uh, so a lot of the, on Monday, we'll be introducing the new team and sort of going over, uh, we'll be putting a lot of, uh, of links in the chat for information about Rotary. And also Roz, Roz is the new Polio Plus Chair for the district. I shouldn't say new because she's our hero, our Polio Plus hero, heroine. Uh, but she will be talking to you about uh, you know, her plans going forward, about planning for yeah. uh, World Pol Polio Day. Uh, you know, uh, Wynn will be talking about the endowment and I'll be speaking about grants briefly. So, you know, it'll be, a, it, you know. Broader, uh, it's broader. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> and also, you know, we're actually, you know, we're gearing up for World Polio Day and World Polio Month. And then foundation is uh, November, is foundation month. So, and we'll be talking about, you know, uh, planning for the uh, foundation dinner for the district and events for uh, foundation month uh, in Rotary, things like that. So, you know, it'll be completely different from this. Okay. This is okay. one of the nuts and bolts. I know um, one of the things I think that's, that's the challenge I found, which is I liked Arjun coming to our meetings to um, to uh, it, show where the money goes, because I mean, somewhere in the past, I got the connection between giving to the foundation and then how that money comes back to the districts to be matched. But I think an awful lot of people, it's, it's a sort of a difficult leap. I mean, they know painting their own school or planting a tree next door, but giving money, I mean, you know, just $10 a month. I mean, something, anything. And you have an international impact. That's the thing that attracted me and everybody is motivated by something else. But I know that's a challenge for the foundation is to somehow connect giving to that, how it affects our global grants and even our district grants that yeah, link that's that's, that's yeah. actually that's actually kind of the focus uh, okay Del, uh, Del made it very clear that that the purpose of the monday uh the monday's okay. meeting is inspiration you know we we and that is the connection we want to make between giving and what happens to the money yeah uh, yeah because you know, basically 100% of the money comes back to our district. Uh, well, you know, I have to say that was another really big thing why I, I gave to Rotary was that um, they watch the money because I get so tired of all the governments and everybody just giving money. Oh, look at, we gave $3 million to this. Yeah, guess what? These people can't maintain it. They don't have the resources. They don't have the ability. And the money gets wasted, but Rotary watches the money. And that that was a big, you know, I mean, did you say something, Mark? That's sort of good. That's a good slogan to have. Rotary watches the money or is oh. careful with the money or something like that. Oh, listen, that's why we have a force on rating with Charity Navigator because, because we do watch the money. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's something that's, I don't know, it, it made an impact on me, you know, 
so I, I don't know how it would affect other people, but. And you know, the important thing to remember about Rotary grants, of course, you know, district grants, uh, we administer in our district, but uh, global grants, we're not, we're not uh, partnering with governments or, you know, political parties, you yeah. know, we, we partner with other Rotary clubs and those Rotary clubs are bound to the same uh, memorandum of understanding concerning the use of money. Uh, they are following business practices just like we do. So we, you know, the money is being watched uh, and not just by us, you know, the people, yeah. when we deal with someone in India, we're dealing with somebody yeah. who is a Rotarian and who understands the requirements of doing a Rotary project. You know, I have to tell you the story if you guys don't mind. Years ago, I went to a seminar. There was a man there named Ernesto Ciroli. He used to be with the Italian uh, Foreign Service. And he told the story, as I recall, that he went, they went to Africa. Italy was going to give money to the Africans. And they said, we're going to show you how to plant vegetables so you can sell them and increase your you know, economic environment. So they planted all these vegetables along a river and they were all growing. And they're like, oh, look at this. And the natives are like, yeah, OK, OK. Oh, now look, now look, you're ready. You're going to be ready to harvest and make all this money. Yeah, OK. And then they come in one day and it's all gone. Everything's just gone. What 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 the hell happened? Uh, well, this is where the uh, the elephants and the uh, hippos cross in their yearly uh, crossing. <laughs> what the lesson was, at, it's like micro uh, loans. Find out what the just what the people want. Talk to the people there. What do they want? They don't need a really big thing. They need a little thing so they can do it on their own. So they can say, "I did this. I helped." Not somebody from up above, you know, did it onto them, but I did it myself. And when you empower people to do it themselves and to help other people in their communities, you're going to get world peace. But that's anyway, I, I found that a very inspiring and connecting to how Rotary doesn't impose, but ask people what they want and gives them what they want and what they need. Anyway, 